Hello, in this OpenGL video, we are going to show you how to get mouse input using GLFW. It's really simple, there is a lot of functionality to do with mouse input, which is fantastic. The first method that we're going to look at is cursor position callback, which basically allows us to detect the position of our cursor within the window. So, First of all, we're just going to include IO stream as we're going to be logging out some numbers to see where well our cursor is. Next, we're going to do a function declaration, so static void cursor position callback, and this takes three parameters. First is glfw window I'm going to call it window next is a double which is the X position and then finally it's the Y position of the cursor next we need to actually set the cursor callback so just do that anywhere after you've initialized the window I'm just going to do it after this GLFW set cursor pause callback that is the one we want. We'll be covering the other methods as well, so don't worry. Window, and then finally for this, you just simply specify the method. So for ours, this cursor position callback, semicolon. Now next, we want to actually implement this method. If we scroll down, go to static void cursor position callback and again the parameters are the same so glfw window double x pause double y pause and then in here we're going to do std c out x position colon Actually, you know what? I am going to do it a little different. I'm going to do x pause colon and then the y position. We'll be able to distinguish between the two very easily. So now we can actually run this. As you can see, I am moving my mouse and the coordinates are changing so this isn't just valid for when the mouse is within the window it's valid when it's outside of the window you might want that if you don't don't worry we'll be covering a method that only detects it when it's within the window obviously if it's within the window then it's working as well our screen resolution is 640 by 480 so the bottom left is basically 0 and 480 top is 0 0 and the bottom right is 640 by 480 aka our screen width and our screen height the next method we're going to look at is cursor enter callback which as we just discussed only reports to the user when the cursor is within the window not outside moving as well so callback GLFW window and entered and now we just need to set it to the cursor callback actually before we even do that I'll, I'll leave this method declared I just want to show you some input mode so GLFW set input mode window and for the pump for the mode put gl fw underscore cursor because we are going to be modifying the cursor and there are a few values the gl fw underscore cursor disabled so if we just run this we now don't have a cursor anymore so if you don't want a cursor, 
then you gl fw underscore cursor underscore disabled you might not want to that's more than logical next it's hidden so let's just run this while the cursor is within the window it is hidden so the user can't see it let's say when they're playing the game and move around in a first person shooter but as soon as it goes out it appears again and then finally gl fw cursor normal is is just the regular standard cursor where it's well, always on so i'm just going to leave it as the normal one and like i was just doing before we were dealing with the cursor and the callback so what we need to do is glfw set cursor and to callback window and for this specify the method that's going to be called so cursor enter callback and now finally all we need to do is void actually to save time uh, this can get very very tedious so it's going to do if entered stdc out entered window and line I'm just going to copy and paste this change this to an else so once the mouse leaves the window I'm going to put left window so if we run this now we'll get or you'll see yourself in a second as you can see actually it's best if I just disable this comment Otherwise, this is going to be too much hassle. So you can see entered window. When I leave it, it says left window. Even though I'm moving it, it doesn't keep reporting it because the state of entering the window only occurs once at any given time. And leaving it is the same case. So I've entered, left, entered, left, entered, and so forth. We aren't finished there. There is a quite a few more things. Also, you might be wondering how would let's say you detect or get the x and y position only when the mouse has entered the screen i'm not going to show you that because it's very simple and i want you to do this as an extra task what you essentially have to do is combine these two methods in terms of them working together have some sort of state some sort of boolean which is set to true when it's in entered and only then do you do something with these positions otherwise you set it to false and you don't actually use these positions so the next method that we're going to be dealing with is mouse button callback so now we're going to detect when the user is clicking any buttons on a mouse so void mouse button callback so gl fw window int button int action int mods and now all we need to do is gl fw set mouse button callback window and now we specify our method that we're going to call again just copy and paste this ah this saves so much time Simply put in here, we're gonna do if button equals glfw underscore mouse underscore button, and now you simply check which button you are detecting. For me, I am just gonna keep it simple and just do the right mouse button, and then what you can do is combine it with an action. So action equals glfw underscore press so either press or release so if i do press this is triggered when the user presses the button release is when the user releases the right mouse button so i'm going to do std c out right button pressed std and line i'm actually going to copy and paste this 
and change this to GLFW release right button released so if we run this bad boy now as you can see oh, nothing is getting called so 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 let's have a look at why that is let's go up very interesting stuff I must have just missed a very simple line of code you know what I'm actually going to comment out these methods I don't really need them I figured out what it was I was pressing the right I mean the left mouse button and I've set the code so it detects the right mouse button so as you can see right button pressed right button release so that's how you detect different mouse buttons you might be wondering how do you detect scroll very simple stuff just do void scroll call back and this takes a few parameters gl fw first is the window that we're dealing with double x offset this is if your mouse has x scroll as well double y offset and now what we're going to do is copy and paste this do std c out x offset and then finally just end the line so if I run this bad boy now just move it over oh forgot to do one thing forgot to actually set this so for this you just do G out FW set scroll callback window and set specify the method that's going to be called finally we can run this so let's just move this over here and now I am scrolling down so down is negative and up is positive the greater the value the faster I'm scrolling so I'm just going to set my mouse to unlimited scroll it's a Logitech mouse as you can see we've got some really high values or low values technically and that's the same when I am scrolling up so that's how you detect scrolling next what I want to do is quickly show you something to do with sticky buttons and let's just show you the code first set input mode window for the mode I want to put glfw underscore sticky mouse buttons and for the value put one what sticky mouse buttons do is make sure your mouse button or the when the user clicks the mouse button it's always detected and the reason it might not get detected is if we scroll down here this GLFW poll events is basically detecting and processing any events but theoretically a poll event may occur poll all events the user may click a button let, let's just say they press a button and we've got some code here for pressing a button like so but they release the button before the next poll event and as a result this button press will never get detected in that scenario so what you do is enable sticky keys generally speaking you're probably going to enable these all the time and what this say this basically flags what you've done so if the user click is, uh, clicks a button flags it and says until the next poll has dealt with it we're not going to stop so even when you release the key it's still going to pick it up as a pressed key simply because it hasn't dealt with that particular event so that's just something to bear in mind and then finally 
what we're going to do is show you how to actually change the cursor so just literally do it anywhere really I'm just going to do it yeah so if I do unsigned char pixels for this just do 16 times 16 times by 4 you can experiment with all of this code mem set for this specify pixels then 0 xff for the size just do size of pixels now do gl fw image image I am missing a bracket and now we're all good to continue do image dot dot width equals 16 image dot height equals 16 image dot pixels equals si pixels not 16 <laughs> GLFW cursor equals GLFW create cursor specify the image for this we actually want to do is do ampersand image and for these values put zero and finally to do GLFW set cursor window and cursor and what we'll actually have now is a new square so as you, as you can see we got a nice little square instead of our normal cursor so that's how you can modify the cursor you can customize this code a bit more to get something more like what you would want the last piece of the puzzle that we're going to show you is how to get x and y position values easily so you can use them outside of this method to do that just go into your while loop and what you want to do is double you know what it would be better if I declare these outside so if I do double x pars equals zero double y I can actually just put this on the same line y pars equals zero and now what you want to do is glfw get cursor position specify the window do ampersand x pause ampersand y pause and what this will do is because we're actually just referencing it right here it'll update these values with the cur with the cursor position so you can easily see where the mouse is and use those coordinates accordingly I'm not going to do anything with it because it's pretty straightforward stuff this is pretty much everything that you're going to need to know regarding mouse input with OpenGL and GLFW. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions dot php. There'll be a link in the description, plus there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video and the source code from every other video in this series. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.